A couple years ago, a photographer, photographer named Felipe Escheru, a French photographer, decided he would um, do an experiment of sorts with, uh, with lighting and with portraits. Now, Philippe typically uses a large studio. Um, he has the finest gear. I think he shoots with a $40,000 phase one digital camera, medium format digital camera. And, and he set about to see if he could duplicate similar effects uh, in his studio. So he did this portrait series and produced these images. And I thought they're absolutely stunning. I mean, they're, I think they're beautiful, right? Very dramatic. Lots of interest. Lots of emotion. Lots of mood. Beautiful detail. They almost look like paintings. Now, of course, the characters and the subjects look very interesting also, right? I mean, it's not like he's shooting uninteresting people like our friends in the dorms or our roommates dressed in t-shirts. These guys look these guys look really interesting. But that's not all of it. Felipe definitely had some skills and some ingenuity. This is his light source. I think it's a Big Mac box with a straw and a flashlight. And what he did was he constructed a tiny little soft box and used that as his light source. And he used it quite well. There's his little soft box. He'd hold that up in front of his subject and with his other hand he would take the picture with his cell phone or his smartphone. And the results were absolutely fantastic. It goes to show you that if you know light, it doesn't matter what tool you're using. As long as you can use light and know what light sources do and know whether something's harsh or soft light and know the characteristics of light and how to use them, you're gonna be able to craft an image as, you, as you'd like. So tools come and go, but knowledge of light is gonna be there for, for indefinitely. All these were shot and edited on a smartphone. Using that light source. So, I told you there are three characteristics of light and we've covered the quality of light. There's also the directional light and the color of light. And we're going to talk about direction this week because that's just as important as the quality or color. Where the light comes from and how, that, how the direction of that light affects the mood and the look of your client or subject or still life or whatever is just as important as the quality of light. Here in this landscape photo, we see that the light is coming from the, the setting sun, right? So this object is backlit. It's sort of side lit also. The light is wrapping around the textures in the boat and it's super beautiful. And here we have Lake Bled. I believe this is in Croatia. I've been there. It was beautiful. Um, I was there during the, I think it was the fall when they have the, uh, um, 
this this festival they do where they take little they save up eggs all year and then they um bring them out down to the seashore all of or the not the seashore the lake shore and all of the residents of bled uh crack the eggs <coughs> or they have the shells and they fill them with just a little bit of um of kerosene i think with a little wick and they light them and the entire shore the entire lake is filled with little twinkling lights it's a real beautiful thing, but you can see the light is really soft in this image. And if you look in the foreground where the snow is down there, the snow is being cross lit. It's being lit from the side, from the right side of the image where the sun is setting. And that creates texture. Side lit, side light always helps accentuate texture. So you don't get that texture when it's backlit. You don't get that texture when it's front lit. You only <clears throat> get this texture when things are side lit, objects are side lit. The same thing here. The boat setting on the right, the sun setting on the right side of the image, and you see the texture of the boat and it's skimming across the water. <clears throat> but again, <coughs> the light source is on the right side. In fact, in the last several images, in every one of them, you can tell where the light source is coming from because the sun is out. And the sun in outside photos is generally the light source. You can see here in this street photo, um, people are being backlit, right? Because the sun's out, you can see where the sun's coming from and you know that that's the direction of the light. That's where the sun's coming from. But what if there's no visible light source present? What if the sun's not visible or you're using artificial light, like a flashlight or studio lights or a ring light? There are three ways to determine the direction of the light. One is a catch light. And that happens in the eyes. If you look in the eyes, the eyes are usually reflect. If they have liquid on them, they're a reflectant source and they'll reflect any light source that's hitting them. So if you want to engineer, or excuse me, reverse engineer, any lighting setup that you think you might want to try or you think might be interesting, all you've got to do is look deeply into a subject's or an animal's eyes, and you can see how they've been, how they've been illuminated. The other way to do that <clears throat> is look for shadows and look for highlights. If you don't see any highlights, look for shadows. If you don't see any shadows, look for a highlight. But, um, but between those three things, you should be able to have a really good idea of where light's coming from. If we take this sphere, for example, and we look for highlights and shadows to determine where light's coming from, if you, if you look at the top where it says literally says light source, that's where the light's coming from. So uh, to the bottom of that, and directly opposite, would be a shadow. So if you don't have the light source, you might have a shadow, and if you don't have a shadow, you might have a light source. Vice versa, right? A highlight. And that's generally where you look. So in this image here, this is artificial light, right? And this is where we start becoming, having problems in determining where light's coming from. Because this all looks really smooth, like there might not even be a light source. But in fact, there are two different directions in this, in this image right? If we look at the bubbles, the bubbles have a highlight on the right side, me meaning they've been illuminated on the right side. If we look at this, the soap dispenser, we see a little bright highlight just above the T in botanical leaf. That means that light is coming from top left or almost direct, almost overhead. And if we look below the soap dispenser to the bottom right, we'll see that it does cast a shadow that is opposite of that highlight. Now, because these light sources are different and varied and almost opposing, this may be a composite, meaning they may have shot the, that, that water droplets, those water droplets, and then they may have shot the, the bottle, and then they may have composited them together and, and meshed them together in Photoshop or some sort of other editing program. 
So you see, when you're trying to reverse engineer an image or see where light's coming from or how it's done, you can do that by knowing where highlights and shadows are coming from. That'll tell you the direction of the light. If we look in subjects like human beings or animals, <coughs> you can tell where light's coming from a lot of times by highlights and shadows, right? So we'll look there and if you'll notice the highlights are coming from the right side of her head and the shadows are on the left side of her head. And this would mean that the light, her light source is probably top right to her body. If you look at the catch light in her eye, that little white light, little white circle in the top right of her eye on a clock, that would be about two o'clock, just above her pupil, that right there is a catch light. And that tells us exactly where the light is. So between the catch light in Anne Hathaway's eye and the shadows pattern on her face, we can easily discern how this was illuminated and do it ourselves. Right? Shadows and highlights. There are no catch lights in their eyes. So when images don't have catch lights because either the the sun is not in the right spot. This might be outside. It looks like it's outside. And this they might be top lit. But if you look underneath their chins, there's a dark shadow. And it looks like these might be top lit. Another reason you might know they're top lit is because the brow on the top of their, the bone on the top of their head, where their, their eyebrows attach to, usually gives sh people shade when they walk around all day. It, give, they, it gives shade for your eyes. It's an, an anatomical thing, uh, bone or structure that gives your eyes shade so they're not looking directly into the sun all day. So if, you're, if you have no catch lights in your eyes and you're outside, this could mean that you're being top lit and the sun is, those bones are creating shade on your eye, which doesn't have a catch light. So objects and subjects, you guys, can be front lit where it wipes out all the shadow, like this. There's no shadow on Carolyn's face anywhere. There, she just has catch lights in her eyes. And the catch lights are coming from the sky behind the photographer. A big open sky creates big catch lights in the subject's eyes. This is Terry Richardson. Terry Richardson is a loser of a photographer um, who photographed probably some of the most, most celebrated people uh, on the planet in terms of celebrities and models. Unfortunately, he was banned by Condé Nast magazines for um, trading sexual favors for possible um, job opportunities to young models. So a little bit of a, actually a lot of a sleaze bag. Um, so yeah, but the reason I put him up is because he pioneered a look of harsh light, harsh front lit subjects which pretty much go against a lot of what photographers like to see and what they're taught to, to, taught to do. This is a very amateurish look, but uh, because he adopted it and it's the only thing he used when he got jobs with like Mark Jacobs and other publications, um, it was the, sort of his signature style. His signature style was to do something that most photographers like didn't like and it took all the shape and form out of your body. Like here, Jared Leto, if he was cross-lit, which we're going to see in a couple slides, his abs and chest and muscles and stuff would show up. But he's being front lit with a harsh light. And you can tell he's being front lit because, number one, there's a shadow right behind them that you can barely see. And also, if you look in their eyes, in their pupil, dead on, dead center of the pupil is a harsh light source. Now, harsh light sources, as we talked about um, a couple weeks ago, are usually created by small light or harsh excuse me, uh, harsh light is usually created by small light sources. And if you look in their eyes, there's a tiny little um, catch light reflecting the size of the light source. So this light source, and I know his work and how he works, is a little tiny flash he used, right? These, these catch lights, tiny little circles, are very different than these catch lights, which are big, big pools of light that are soft and coming from a big open sky. So these catch lights come from a large light source. These catch lights come from a harsh and a small light, so a small light source. 
you could be a side lit, right? And again, if you look at the right side of the sphere, there's a highlight, and down at the bottom, there's a shadow. That's how you tell a side light. This is sort of the opposite of Terry Richardson's look. Here, this woman who's exercising looks ripped. She looks like she could lift, a, pull a tree out of the ground, right? The reason she looks so amazing and ripped, well, number one is because she is amazing and ripped, but number two is because the photographer, whoever photographed this, photographed her and had a, a light coming from her side. Those side lights helped accentuate te ten uh, texture. So all of her muscles look super ripped and amazing. If we look here at this exercise photo, this is front lit or what they call flat lit. And the reason it's called flat lit is because the lighting's really flat. It's super soft and very forgiving, but it doesn't look like she works out. So you can see the difference between side light here and flat or front light here. Front light, you guys, tends to wipe out the texture because it fills in the shadows. You, In order to achieve an, a, a, a look of texture, you've got to have shadows. Shadows are where you create texture. It's similar if you have a zit on your face. If you side light a zit or a scar or a wrinkle, there's, there's, a, there's a shadow there and a highlight. You just made it 3D. So if you want to highlight wrinkles, scars, zits, side light them. They'll show up like crazy. If you want them to go away, then remove the highlight and the shadow from their little their little bump. If you take the highlight and the shadow away and front or flat light them, they no longer have shape or form and you won't see them. That's why a lot of people like soft front lit front lit portraits because you're technically removing all the all the shadows from any imperfections that would show up. <coughs> Here's me side lighting Ernie working with the with the homeless with the homeless project I did. I'm using a remote. I've got a I've got a backlight on him with my left hand and I'm using a remote to trigger the camera and that big softbox is his side light. It's side lighting him because I want to show the texture in his beard and in his face and his clothes. And here's side lit again, right? For texture. The light's coming from the top right. And Jaguar is getting some texture across his face. So when we have we also have top light, where the light source, like uh, in the summer, on a sunny day at, day at noon, is coming directly on top of our head. This is top lit right here. We know it's top light because the bride has a highlight on the top of her arm and a shadow on the bottom of it. We know it's harsh light because the transitions between, between that highlight and shadow are super, are super abrupt. It goes directly from like white to black in like no time at all. There are no mid-tone grays for transitions. <clears throat> Same thing here. There's a highlight on the top of her forehead. There's a shadow below her jawline. And his face gets lost in deep shadow. Top light, right? The top light isn't always bad. I mean, sometimes if you lift the subject's chin, like I did with Jordan here, and tip him into the light, he can get a big, pretty pool of light in his eyes. In the top, you can see that catch light. That illuminate, <clears throat> excuse me. That illuminates the color of his eye, but it's still sort of a harsh light shot, because the shadows fall into darkness, right, into black. But the direction of this light is top. He's top lit. You can also be backlit, light coming from behind you, like in a silhouette. She's backlit, right? Because you can see that golden light, golden little light on her hair and you can see the light source is in front of her, that means she's backlit. If we were in front of her, she'd be frontlit. But since the, you always go by where the photographer's standing and we're behind her, so the subject is, it's the light is behind the subject. He's backlit. Look how beautiful that looks. Backlighting is super fun. She's 
she's backlit. Now, there's a couple of things you want to pay attention to when you're backlighting people, especially. Number one, if you backlight a brunette or somebody with dark hair, you get some separation from the background. Looks super good. If you backlight someone with blonde hair or lighter hair, you run the risk of blowing their hair out or overexposing their hair and overexposing the highlights. And it makes it so they doesn't look like they have much hair, right? She's got forehead. And then you see the shadows of her hair on the top. And after that, um, her hair sort of disappears. So be really careful about backlighting light haired people or light haired objects. Here we have a little brunette, the chicken's brunette, and then the little boy's brunette, right? If you look at the chicken's butt, it's backlit. If you look at the little boy's hair, he's backlit too. Beautiful shot. And he's got beautiful big catch lights in his eyes. If you look in his eyes, they're not a tiny little circle of white, meaning they'd be a small light, which would be a harsh light source. They're a big pool of light which is a large light source, which generates soft light. So here the subject is backlit with, and, the, and he's, he's illuminated with soft light. And we have bottom lit. Now bottom lit, unfortunately, is not ever a very good look for human beings. And the reason is, is we're terrestrial, meaning we walk around on an earth that's lit by the sun. The sun is in the sky, the sun is literally always above us. So as terrestrial beings, we are always lit by, the, we're always top lit. We walk around being illuminated in some shape or form by the sun above us, right? So the reason this looks a little eerie and creepy is because we don't, we're not usually bottom lit ever. In fact, it completely goes against our natural look. If we walked around on the sun all day, right, we'd look just like this. We'd be bottom lit and it'd be fine. And then maybe if we were top lit, that'd look creepy. But as of right now, we live on the earth. We're lit from the top pretty much our entire existence. And so bottom lighting an individual makes you look a little eerie, um, non-natural, right? It's not a natural look for humans. I mean, you, you can look at the... Um, this, the Lincoln statue here, and on the left, he's uh, <laughs> illuminated normally, right? And you can tell he's illuminated from the top left because of his hair. There's a shadow underneath it. There's shadows under his eyes, and there's a shadow under his nose. <coughs> so you know he's being top lit. What happens when he's bottom lit? Well, on the right, he doesn't look anything like his, his normal self. Because the shadows that we normally see on people's faces are exactly reversed. And highlights are reversed. Now, we talked a little bit about just light in general and different directions of light. Light on people has, um, has a certain effect on people's faces based on our shape of our face and based on um, our, our balance and our symmetry, what our nose and eyes, how big they are, how big our lips are, um, etc. And some people's faces can be illuminated by every direction of light and they look just the same or they look better. Some people can't take every direction of light and may look worse. So you've got to be really careful. If we look at this uh, direction of light, thing really quick, this little video, you'll see that it's not always a good look for people. So here's this gal, and the light is going to circle her, and you'll see the catch light in her eye, but you also see, in some instances, she looks really creepy. And in some instances, she looks normal or really good. Oh, that, that's, I'm over it. Yeah, it got a little bit too dramatic for me. So that's 
that you guys is a an example of of what dif what different directions of light do to somebody's face. Here, this looks pretty good for her. This is called butterfly lighting because it looks like there's a little butterf a shadow butterfly underneath her nose. This is almost loop lighting where the shadow of the nose goes to the left or right and hangs off one of the nostrils to the left or right, but doesn't quite connect to the shadow on the cheek. That is looks like she's bottom side bottom lit. If you look at the catch light in her eye, light is coming from like the bottom left side and it looks awful. She looks awful to me. So these, you guys, are standard, industry standard lighting um, lighting patterns on human faces. They're used in cinema. They're used in photography. They're used all over the place when you're going to light and do stuff. Now, if you look at the very first one, it, it's butterfly lighting, right? So this is usually the light, the light is usually sort of in front of the subject and sort of coming from the top. And it creates what you look for shadows and highlights again. And these lighting patterns, you guys, are pretty much all defined by where the shadows are. Okay. And the very first image, there's butterfly lighting. And that happens that you can tell that it's butterfly lighting when you see a little butterfly underneath the shadow, underneath the subject's nose. Also from the, on the bottom lip you'll see a little bit of shadow, which helps pronounce the, the volume of the bottom lip. Just below that is loop lighting. Now loop lighting is when the light's not directly overhead, but it's either to the left or the right, and it's sort of coming from the top. And you'll see that because the nose shadow drifts to the left or drifts to the right, and it creates sort of a loop. That's called loop lighting. Below that is called Rembrandt. And what's happening is that nose shadow is going from directly underneath the nose to the side of the nose, and then in Rembrandt lighting, which is which was uh, the term was coined uh, from Rembrandt paintings, um, and the the lighting style that Rembrandt the painter used to use, um, the nose shadow actually connects to the cheek shadow. They connect, they fully connect, and it creates a sort of an inverted triangle on the far cheek, right? It encompasses the eye, and then it, it makes this sort of un upside down triangle on the cheek and the other side of the face is illuminated. Now if we go even further at the top right, we have split lighting. That's where the other side of the face is wiped out completely. Broad and short lighting we're not going to cover. I want you guys to know butterfly, loop, Rembrandt, and split lighting if you're going to be looking at object or subjects for people, right? So here we sort of see, now these, the, the below you'll see the, the um, five sort of different examples and there are characteristics of these but i don't think they did a good enough job their lighting is a little more soft and less easy to see so the first the first uh diagram i just showed you is the one i sort of want you to remember these are just a little bit more difficult to, to view and to determine because they're not nearly as dramatic but what i want you to know from this is that um the, the more light you use, the less dramatic it is, as you can see on the far left with flat light or front light. And the more shadow you use when we go to like split lighting on number five on the bottom, that gets even more dramatic, okay? So the least dramatic is like flat lighting and then it goes butterfly. The darker the shadows get into loop, Rembrandt and split lighting, that's where you start to get your drama. And butterfly was called paramount lighting because they used to use it in paramount movies all the time. Okay? So if you look back to here, you can more easily see it. And butterfly lighting, in front, uh, flat light or front light, and then butterfly lighting, there's a small shadow. Loop lighting, it starts to get a little more dramatic. Rembrandt lighting, there's your drama coming on. Split lighting, boom, super dramatic. So the bigger your shadow gets on the face, the more drama you get. Remember that. So here we have Natalie Portman. We have harsh light. And I'm going to tell you guys sort of the characteristics, right? That we have harsh light. Uh, I know this because the shadows are super dark and the highlights are really bright. Look under her uh, chin. You'll see um, the shadow drop off to dark, almost pure black. Um, the catch light is really small. That means the light source is small. And small. Uh, 
small light sources generally give off harsh light. And she has a butterfly lighting pattern on her face. Here we have Rembrandt, right? We have one side of the face that's lit and the other side has sort of an inverted triangle. The nose shadow is connected to the cheek shadow. Here we have Rembrandt also. Here we have split lighting. Here, Rembrandt. And loop lighting, right? Just by her nose on the left side is a little loop. Although this isn't done as well. The light needs to get a little bit higher, I think. Here, we have butterfly lighting. Check out that butterfly underneath her nose. And here we have Rembrandt, where the nose shadow is connected to the cheek shadow. Rembrandt again. Loop lighting. Rembrandt. Oh, my bad. Dude, that's not Rembrandt. I felt it was almost Rembrandt, but you know what? That nose shadow doesn't connect fully connect to the cheek shadow, so that's loop. That looks like loop to me too. So to review, we're gonna look and see these following images and I want you to sort of see if you can test yourselves, right? And use your knowledge of light that we've got so far to determine the following. I wanna know what the quality of light is, harsh or soft. How do we tell what the quality of light is? Well, large light sources usually have large catch lights. They're usually, um, they're the contrast of them is is very very low right there's no abrupt high uh, fall off between highlights and shadows harsh light is exact opposite it usually comes from a small light source and the the transition between highlights and shadows is really abrupt and then I want you to describe the direction of the light where's the light coming from and how can you tell the direction of the light look to catch lights look to shadows and look to highlights, right? And lastly, is there a discernible lighting pattern on the face, right? If so, what is that? So if we look at this image here, well, we know the lighting is super soft right off the bat because there's no blacks. So this is soft light and it's front lit, okay? There is no discernible lighting pattern because there's zero shadows. So try this one. What do you guys think this one would be? So if you guess harsh light, you're right. There's deep dark shadows, there's really really bright highlights. The shadows are go to pure black. Right? If you guess side light, that's true too because the lights come the light is coming from sort of the top side accentuating texture. And actually, you can see all the acne and bumps on her face if you look close. So a side light will accentuate those. And lastly, the lighting pattern is Rembrandt because that nose shadow connects to the cheek shadow, leaving an inverted triangle on the far side of the cheek. Here, what is the quality of the light? And where is it coming from? Well, the quality of the light is soft and she's backlit. How about here? Well, if you look deep into his eyes, you'll see a tiny little tiny speck of a catch light at the very bottom. So all just from that, if it's a small catch light, we know it's harsh light and we can tell from the shadows and the highlights that it is. Next, it's bottom lit, as you can tell for, again from that catch light, because light is coming from the bottom, it's being reflected in the bottom of the eye. Therefore, <clears throat> this is harsh light and bottom lit. That was my alarm, super awesome. Oh my God.
This one here, harsher soft light. Look at the transition between highlight and shadow. Super harsh. Side lit, done, right? Oh, and it's split lighting. Here, well, there's no discernible shadows really, so we know it's soft light. Um, what else do we know? It's probably front lit, because I don't see any shadows either. I don't see any shadows under her nose, and I don't see any discernible, any discernible lighting pattern really. Besides front lit or flat lit. So here's a little trick here because it's darker skin, darker makeup. But if we look under the nose, we'll see a shadow. It looks like butterfly. If you look under the chin, you see shadows that go to pure black. If you look in the eyes, you see a top light and you see a bottom mid light that looks a little bit smaller. So there's two light sources, one coming from the top and one looks like trying to even out that harsh light. <clears throat> so it's bottom lit and top lit. Harsh light, side lit, loop lighting. And remember, drama increases as you increase your shadows, right? So to create a dramatic portrait, front light, right, is the least dramatic front lit is. And then it goes butterfly light is a little more dramatic. Loop lighting gets more dramatic. Rembrandt gets more dramatic as the shadow crosses and connects to the cheek. And split lighting is your most dramatic. And you can see the drama in this photo. It's your it's your shadow that creates the drama. So after today's lecture, <clears throat> you guys have already talked about harsh and soft light. Um, you nailed that. And now we've got down um, direction of light and lighting, uh, popular lighting patterns on people's faces for subjects, for um, portraits. And now you got that under your belt. So you should be able to talk about the quality of light and the direction of light. Next week, we're going to be calling... Uh, covering the color of light. So all three characteristics of light will be wrapped up.